it's work. Hey, we're actually live. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We, Angela and I have been sitting here going, we've never done the be live thing on Facebook live before. So we're trying to figure this out at the same time as waiting to go live. So welcome everybody. We're so excited to do our first Facebook live for you. And we're going to be doing a series of these. But first of all, let me tell you who I am and then let me tell you who my special guest is. So a lot of people know me, but for those that don't, I'm Judy Martini. I'm a transformational coach and mentor. And I help people with depression, anxiety, relationship issues, PTSD, loss of purpose, panic, you name it. I get the privilege of helping people all around the globe. And I thought about doing a series on many different things that are affecting us as we are in lockdown. And my colleague and I, Angela, who's an esteemed colleague of mine, she was my virtual assistant for a few years. She's an ex-client of mine that has just soared above any expectations any of us had for her at a time. And she can tell you about that. But I brought her on because of the artist in her and the inspiration that she didn't have and how she received inspiration and how we all can receive inspiration in this time of lockdown. So we're going to do a lot of different series on different things that we need to help us during lockdown, whether it's depression, anxiety, whether it's loss of purpose, whether it's boredom and how we can help ourselves. So stay tuned for more. We're going to be putting more out there. But for today, we're going to talk about inspiration. And what does it mean? And how do we find inspiration? And most people will say, listen, I don't get inspired. I'm not an artist. I'm not creative. I can't do any of that. And I say, no, nah, that isn't what this is about. This isn't about being an artist or, or being a songwriter or anything. It's about being typically inspired in day-to-day -day living. So let me introduce Angela to you and Angela tell us tell our audience a little bit about yourself before we get chatting here okay thank you Judy I uh, appreciate being on your show here um, I'm an artist and an illustrator I illustrate children's books and I also have been a graphic designer and I've worked in the publishing industry so I am a creative individual and I try various projects and I work with various clients around the world and uh, I work every day as an artist as well. Awesome. So, yeah. and, and, and so, Angela, you know all about not having inspiration and having inspiration big time. Yes. You know, and so let's briefly talk about what it feels like when you normally are an inspired person and you lose inspiration. Because this mm -hmm. will tie in with those that um, used to be inspired for different things, whether they go to work or whether the things they do at work. And now because of lockdown, that their inspiration has just gone like whoop right yeah. away. So what yeah. did it feel like when you were inspired? And then when it, you know, what happened when you lost inspiration and what did that feel like? And I think, you know, our mm -hmm. audience can, can really relate to that. Well, I think it was when you met me about two years ago and I was so trapped in my own mind and everything had gone wrong in my life. And I think the biggest problem which we discussed at the time was that I was so trapped in my own mind that I didn't think I could change anything. So, sorry. So that, that was where I was at. And I actually was so stuck that I thought my life was over. I couldn't do anything. And you kept saying to me, but it's just your mind. It's, you, you know, you can go outside, you know, you can go and do things, but I had been so paralyzed by fear and what I'd experienced in the world, loss of my, my business. There was so much going on that it, I, I, I think I was so scared. And like this lockdown, I'm sure many people feel like they are so scared because there's such an uncertainty in the future and nobody knows actually what's going to happen. And I think it starts with your mental health, first of all. And once um, you help me to work through those um, problems, and underlying traumas that were actually surfacing at the time. I think then my inspiration slowly came back. And I remember even you asked me to do some memes and things for you, and I thought, I can't do this. I don't know what I must do. It, I was so stuck that I didn't even, it was like I didn't even know how to do graphic design or art anymore. And the one thing you said to me was go sit outside. And, you know, if you can, go sit and ground yourself. And at the time, I didn't know what grounding actually meant. And, um, and once I started doing that, 
I actually started connecting with myself again. And I think when all the mental blocks started falling away, because I had so many mental blocks, and I think anxiety and stress, depression, all of those things create blocks. And then as an artist, you can't freely express yourself. And so once I worked through all those mental blocks with you, uh, my, my art actually came back. And I think it was a lack of confidence that started, you know, it was a, the reason why I had such, uh, you know, I felt like I was in a cage and I couldn't do anything. And also self-criticism. I had this voice inside telling me, oh, you're not good enough. You can't do this. You know, the people better than you. You know, you always have those thoughts. And um, you feel, oh, I don't have enough skills. I'm too old. I, I can't do this business anymore, you know. And, and the thing is to overcome those things. And you said, you know, try affirmations, really positive affirmations, and change all the negative thoughts to a positive thought. Yeah. And that was really, really hard. You know, it was hard in the beginning to change my mindset. But that's where it started for me, was the Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You're right. And it is about mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, let's address an, an audience. If you have any questions about just inspiration without having to do with, with being an artist of any kind, about how you're getting inspired to get up in the morning and live your day in the same routine day after day. And especially if you're living with people that you may not be so compatible with or that you haven't spent a lot of time with, how do you get inspired to be happy? How do you get inspired to just be you, to be able to cope through the day? You know, let us know. And I know, Susie, you're watching. So, Susie, we had a chat the other day about inspiration and about some of the things that you, you were going through. So, Susie, let us know what you're doing for yourself to be inspired just to be you to cope through the day. We'd love to hear you and hear from you because it makes a difference when we share because then we're all in the same boat, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, and I resonate with Angela because, yes, I'm a transformational counselor, coach, mentor, but I'm also an artist, you know, and I'm a writer and I'm a published author. And, you know, I'm, I'm an artist in my own right of many different things of art that I do. So I'm constantly in a creative mode. I'm constantly, and Angela, you know this, sometimes we're so creative, we can't even start a project because there's so many <laughs> going through our head. Right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I don't have a problem with inspiration and creativity, but a lot of my clients do because they're trapped in that mindset of, I'm not an artist and I don't know where my creativity is because I'm trapped in the nine to five or the nine to nine mm -hmm. of daily living, you know, and when we become inspired within ourselves, our life changes. And we're not talking about inspiration. So you can sit down and do a meme or a Mandela or color or knit as much as being inspired to be yourself and then try something new. And we're going to talk a little bit about which I love is inspiration to be of service. Right. And many people think because they're trapped in their homes that they can't be of service to others. And I'm going to say, no, 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 not a bit, because Angela, you and I right now are being in service to others. Yes. Right. We're being in service to others by coming on here, you know, spending our time on here to help those that are having problems with being inspired just to be themselves, to be able to get up in the morning and, and be someone who they're not usually mm -hmm. because most people leave the house in the daytime. They need to go. They need to. They have to go to some sort of job to be able to pay for the house they live in and pay for the car they drive in to get to that job. Mm -hmm. So their inspiration comes far and few in between. So there's there's like two levels here. And maybe this is another series about how to be inspired just being you and how to get inspired to be of service to others. How to be inspired to be creative within your own self. You know, my daughter's a baker. You know, she's not the type to, to do a, a meal per se, but give her some recipes to bake things and she loves it. You know, so guess what she's been doing a lot of while she has been, you know, home, she's been baking things because it's, it's part of her creativity outleash. You know, so anything is creative and anything is inspiration. You know, Susie would love to hear from you about how you are staying creative and inspired during this time. And Angela, I know for you, um, this lockdown is, is sort of normal for you because you stay home a lot anyway. Yes. You yes, know, you have, 
Yes. So, mm -hmm. but you know what I found? Um, because I'm in a routine and because I'm doing this every day and I've worked through all the kinks of how to get myself out of bed, um, how to get myself started for the day, I find that I don't put pressure on myself early on in the day because then I just land up being in panic mode for the whole day and feeling I have to go, go, go. I have to get tasks done. I must look at a to-do list. And, and I land up not enjoying my day when I'm actually doing it because so many things crop up in your day anyway. You know, like, um, you know my parents might need me or my husband needs me. Or they, they need help with their computer, something like that. So to alleviate frustration, I do set intentions and I I do plan my day generally and say, okay, I'm going to start with an illustration for my children's book. Then later on in the day, I'll take a break and then I'll start looking at perhaps the comic book idea that I would like to do. But in between that, I've also got to make lunch. I've got to go outside, spend some self-care time with myself. And I've organized my day. It, it's very loose, but I do put in the five main things that I want to do in the day. And that is um, to spend some time journaling. That's the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I journal. And then the second thing that I do is I sit quietly and I meditate, I quiet my mind, and I, I find out what I should be doing for the day, not just yeah. what I'm planning. Because sometimes my inspiration comes from just being quiet, you know. And, and the thing is, I think in the beginning of the day, it's better for me because I don't have anybody that I've spoken to. Um, I don't always look on social media first or answer emails or anything like that. Yeah. So I yeah. spend my quiet time in the morning and I find that actually sets me up for a very peaceful, calm day. And also I can write out what I plan for the day if I haven't done it at night. And then what I do is I slowly ease myself into the day. I set up my area where I'm going to be working, clean it up, or have done that the night before. And then I can just sit down and I can work. I yeah, don't, yeah. yeah, I have a specific area where I work. So I know a lot of people when when I was teaching art, they didn't have areas where they work. Maybe if you're busy cooking, you need to set out your ingredients before you actually start cooking. So for me, I like to be a little bit prepared so that it helps me with my mindset. So I click over from doing day-to-day -day tasks and, and then now this is my space, this is me time. And I find that then once I start with um, the creative side, then, um, I don't know, are you there, Judy? Are you still there? Yep. Okay, sorry, I couldn't see you. Um, I just find if I start with the creative side, then I keep going for the rest of the day. But it's important to take the breaks. And um, for me also, I definitely put self-care in so that I have momentum and energy because I get very tired. Yeah. So that's what I do in my day to day. And, and I try and vary my days. If I'm really tired, I actually don't work that day. I put my, my health as a priority. And I think a lot of people may be tired at this time. Um, it's very important, I think, for people to rest. And then, you know, once you, your energy levels are up, you might feel inspired, might mm -hmm. get thoughts and ideas of being inspired and I also read a lot you know I, I read a lot of books as well and and also look at other people who are doing creative things that I like you know other artists um they they inspire me you know I don't you don't live in a bubble without other people so I also listen to very positive things throughout my day so I'm keeping my my mindset very positive I'm not dwelling on negative things or on the things that are going on at the moment. You know, in lockdown, um, will we have enough food? Will we have work? I don't think about those things. I give myself a break from that. And I think it's important to give yourself a break from the news, from everything else. I watch a little bit of it and then I look a little bit on social media and then I keep myself busy with positive things. Okay. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect mm -hmm. advice because, I mean, that's exactly what I do as well. But we've been practicing this method for quite a few years. We've, we've adapted this method. But for the average person, they don't know how. And I mm -hmm. think routines are helpful to a point until they become a must. Yes. You know, because then we, we don't break out of a routine and we're starting to be an autopilot. So there's mm -hmm. a fine balance there of, 
what is my routine and what can I let go of and flow into? Because when, and you know this as well, when divine inspiration comes, it comes in a flood and it's like, oh, and you can't say, okay, I'm going to put it over here. And when I'm done in three hours, I'm going to come back to it. You know, that means I'm either writing it down or I'm going to it or I'm opening it up or I'm starting it or something, yes. you know, and there's a difference between that divine inspiration and being in that routine. You know, how flexible are you to let go of that routine that you started that's working and yes. able to go in divine inspiration? And we're going to talk, maybe we'll, we'll do that about an, a, another topic about what is divine inspiration and how do I yes. tap into that? You know, because inspiration is, is so different for people. And, and I think I said this at the beginning of the show that inspiration isn't inspired to write a song or do an artwork. Inspiration is to make a call to somebody that needs you to be heard, right? That needs to be heard, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's to a parent, a friend, a neighbor, inspiration may come in, oh, I've made some extra food and I know my neighbor's a senior, I'm gonna drop it off on their porch. Mm -hmm. You know, and inspiration will come in those moments when we can be of service to others. And then let's talk about in service to ourselves. So inspiration mm -hmm. comes when, Okay, so here's my routine. I have to do this and I have to do the dishes and I'm going to do some stretching and then I'm going to journal. But man, I feel like I need a bath. I need a hot bath with Epsom salts or essential oils. And all of a sudden you're going to go, no, I can't do that yet because I have to work out first or I have to do my stretching first. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you were given that information because in that hot bath you're doing is more inspiration coming through and an opportunity for extreme self-care. And you know, when I did that whole group um, last year on extreme self-care, we went from what is self-care to what is absolutely necessary for self-care, which is every single day during yes. the day is nothing but self-care. And I know you've adapted that into your life, yes. you know, because we looked at what is self-care? What does that look like? And what does that mean? You know, how, how do I do this? And at first it's a struggle for people because yes. inspiration comes in ways of self-care as mm -hmm. well. So you're going to get a hit to, to have a nap and people will go, well, I can't have a nap. <laughs> yes. I remember that. You used to say, I used to say, I'm tired. You said, just go have a nap. I said, it's the middle of the day. I've got work to do. And you said, go have a nap. <laughs> I know. And, I, and, I was, and initially because I came from a corporate background, you know, you don't have the, the leisure, you know, nobody can just go and have a nap when you want to. So I was in that go, go, go mode and you force yourself to do everything. And when we met and we started working through everything and you taught me to do a lot of self-care, I actually didn't know what the meaning of self-care was. And I never put it in my day. I was actually realized how much I'd been neglecting myself, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally, everything. And I had always put myself on the back burner put everybody else, you know, first. And then oh, you can oh, say. Oh, the people-pleasing syndrome thing. Oh, yes. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole other show. Yes. And then, but, you know, my inspiration, some of the things that uh, I manifested or happened to me was when I was just sitting quietly, having a foot spa, taking my time, you know, actually really enjoying my day and, and just sitting quietly and re-energizing myself. And... I tell you, a lot of um, ideas suddenly flooded in because you relax. You're not actually forcing anything. And you taught me to go with the flow, live moment by moment. And in our type of society, we don't live like that. Every single minute is virtually you know, counted. So to start living um, as, as a dot, as Phil Good says, live as a dot, and as you told me, go with the flow, um, I, it was foreign to me. And now that I'm learning to do that, I can see why it's Because life is ever changing. Minute by minute, life has changed. You know, moment by And hey, look, there's something new. There's something totally new. And, and the world keeps changing. Then you're in lockdown. Then they're going to end it. Then we got locked down for another two weeks. And everybody's saying, where's the food going to come from? Where... What are we going to do with our businesses closing? So there is, is a lot going on. And I've found by actually just living moment to moment now, I actually find I can control the fear. You know, there's, you control the fear, the anxiety, 
um, the negative feelings and thoughts which are part of us. Absolutely, Angela. You hit the nail on the head. And that's up for a whole other series, you know. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep these Facebook lives short, 20 minutes to 30 minutes. We're already 20 minutes. Okay. And, you know, as we keep building them, I know we'll have more and more audience and bring on other guests as well. But mm -hmm. this is a start into how we can inspire ourselves to be more of ourselves or to start mm -hmm. learning. What a great opportunity to start to learn about who we are. And as you know, the three tenets that I help my clients with is number one, who are you at core level that more than your earth suit? Like, who are you beyond your earth suit? And the second is, is your purpose here on this planet? What is your purpose here? What are your mm -hmm. gifts, your talents? What are you here to do? And then the third is, what voice are you tapping into? Your intuition voice, your God voice, your universal voice. What voice is that that's tapping in? Number one, for inspiration, because inspiration comes from a God source, a creator source. Mm -hmm. inspiration doesn't come from what's already in the brain that's just recycled material mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so inspiration comes from a place that is the universal place so we should talk about that as well because you know how that happens and you've had it happen to you for many years and so as have I and a lot of artists have although they may not distinguish it as that you yes. know so we're going to keep you know, just to sort of maybe round this up a little bit, we're going to keep doing this because I think it's important to talk about these things because it hits a resonant note within people in our audience. And a lot of people um, that are waking up to many different things right now out in society, and that, that's a whole different topic. And I call waking up is waking up to what's really happening in our world. You know, mm -hmm. the crimes against humanity, the lies, the false media, this, that, and everything, plus the opportunity for us to be at home and what does that look like and the opportunity for us to maybe evolve into more of who we are than we've ever been you know mm -hmm. and the downfalls of being at home you know like i say how do you stay at home with those people who maybe you're not compatible with how do you stay at home when you're not used to being alone what does that look like is and there's a lot of depression out there there's a lot of fear and i want to start addressing that as well i mean that's just part and parcel of of what I do for as a transformational coach and mentor and as an intuitive mentor as well. I tune into people and what they're feeling and, and what they need to do to shift from where they are. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited, Angela, and I know we're gonna be doing more work together on this mm -hmm. because I think it's valid and I think it's important for people to be able to have an outlet to see themselves in us. You know, mm -hmm. yes, you and I have been doing the work, you know, I've been doing the work for many years. I've known about things for 15, 20 years. But we, we are in the process of still doing the work, and I think it's valuable to share this with people who are either starting out, who are either stumbling, who have questions, anybody that's depressed and has fear, who's lost your purpose, who has relationship issues. I want to cover this in, in all of these Facebook Lives and these series so that we can help support you, so that you know you're not alone, and offer some solutions for you as well. You know, and Angela, you know, as we wind this up, Let's talk about briefly about what you're doing on YouTube to help inspire those that want to play around with some art. Well, you know, a while ago, I thought I've always wanted to teach people art. And I always loved art therapy as well and helping people to express themselves. Because I think art is not just about creating something that is beautiful that you put on a wall. I actually think a lot of the time the art is therapeutic for yourself as well. And it's a, it's a visual expression instead of a verbal expression. Some people like to write. I like to write and I like to do visual, you know, visual art and that kind of thing to express myself. And actually found that I, I found a space of healing when I actually do art. So, you know, I think that I encourage people on YouTube. I've got my own YouTube channel and I'm busy showing people how I draw and paint. And I'm going to also be developing courses where I want to teach people the techniques of painting so that when they want to express themselves, um, they know how to do that. And my biggest aim is to for people to tap into their own source of imagination and learn how to paint from that source, not from references. And, you know, we can all paint from references. But I think, I think a lot of us need to um, heal and we need to, you know, look, look at those wounds of, from the inner child and we from that and I think art is a way to do that and that's what I'd like to teach people 
For sure. And once we learn, this is our first Be Live, this new app that I have. Learn how to put our links in here. We will. Um, and we will put them in the comments. We will have them streaming on here. We will have links available as I practice this and, and learn more about this. And like, I don't even know who's on here. I don't see comments yet. So, you know, sorry for that, guys. If you're commenting, I can't see, I can't hear you. It's I think it says there's six people on here, but not sure. You know, I don't see any comments. So, you know, please forgive us um, right now as we play with this. And if you have any ideas that you want me to discuss and bring on certain guests, I will. Last night on Instagram, I um, was part of Emmanuel Daughter's um, live stream, and he had on Mike. And Mike is an, an all-time incredible tarot card reader and he pulled a card for me that was so dead on that I knew I had to have him as a guest so wouldn't that be fun if I brought him on and we chatted and he pulled cards for you because he's been doing this successfully for years and to add a little bit of fun and hope you know because don't we need hope right now in this world I'm telling you hope is what everybody wants like I know I go beyond hope into that I'm knowing and Angela knows what I mean when I say I know that I know that I know yes, you do. I, go beyond, <laughs> I go beyond the hope and the belief into knowing but many people are stuck on the hope and what that means and I hope this isn't going to happen and I hope this will happen so let's have some support around that so stay tuned everybody we're going to be doing more shows I'm going to keep bringing Angela on as a guest because she's been through uh, been through for the past few years so when I talk about moving from this to that from looking after your stuff and your belief systems you know I'm going to bring her on to give examples of how she moved through that and the hell she went through to be able to do it you know mm -hmm. she's one of my bestest clients ever about the traumatic and the trauma that she's mm -hmm. gone through over the years to be sitting where she's sitting as my guest and co-guest mm -hmm. this, like she's come it's along mm -hmm. so if she can do it anybody can do it and, and a lot of you don't know my story but my story you know and mine is if, if listen if I can sit here and do this and help thousands around the world you know with depression anxiety PTSD loss of purpose and everything if I can do that from my background then you can too so we're mm -hmm. going to leave you with hope and inspiration for you know a better day today hopefully we have helped you in some way please let us know if we have serviced you in some way if this is what has been able to help and motivate you and what topics you would like us to see in the future and on that note look at that Angela we're almost at 30 minutes exactly what my goal wow. was that's fantastic so, and that's I don't fantastic. know how to stop this but I'm going to try so Angela thank you from the bottom of my heart I love you so much you are so awesome awesome and you're inspirational to me so you know thank you, thank we you. Were you've helped me so much yeah and you've taught me a lot and that's why I'm I'm glad to be part of this because um you know I can show people what you've actually taught me and how it's actually helped me in my life because it's changed my life around and I never thought that I'd ever be able to be at this stage of my life. So thank you for helping me and being patient, you know? And my my pleasure. It, my pleasure. I look forward to our sessions and everything else in between. It was the joy of my life. Thank so you. I send you much love. I send everybody love. There is hope for a wonderful future unfolding, guys. So we'll see you here in a couple of days. Look on my Facebook page. I will constantly be putting announcements and notices up about what's coming next. And if you want to be a guest on my show, and you want or know somebody that should be a guest on my show, please message me and we'll do it. So again, have an awesome day. Get inspired about being you guys because there is no one like you in this world. You are unique. You are here for a purpose. And it's beyond changing diapers and cooking food and doing laundry, guys. That, that is so old past day that there's a new way of being coming in. And if I can help show you, then look at that. You've got more than hope for the future. You've got a desire and a purpose to be here. So again, thanks, everybody. Bye for now, everybody. Thanks again, Angela. Okay. Bye. Keep up.